Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and uh, I wanted to start by telling you link to my sponsor, linqto.com. Today, um, they have, they're doing special pricing on Ripple and Cerebrus private equity again. You're going to want to check that out. All right, moving along, James Filan, Ripple has filed a letter requesting a stay of the monetary portion of the court's judgment entered on August 7, 2024, the SEC has consented to the request for a stay. And then there's a bunch of lawyers who weighed in. First, Fred Rispoli, SEC v. Ripple update. Well, the odds have increased of an appeal. Ripple and SEC have agreed on uh, an arrangement where 111% of the monetary judgment will be held in trust to be paid to the SEC only on 30 days after appeal deadline or after appeal concludes. This is not a guarantee that there will be an appeal, but putting that kind of money in a, in a trust is not something that is done unless the SEC is being evasive to ripple lawyers as to whether it intends to appeal. Again, still possible that no appeal happens, but odds have increased. Then we had this, um, where uh, Yasin Mabark was saying, can you please explain this? Translate it, I guess. And he says, Okay, here's my translation. Ripple, we have the check ready. Are you appealing this shit or not? SEC, we can't tell you. Ha, kind of like our entire crypto policy, if you think about it. Ripple, we will collect all interest from you if we pay you. You appeal and we win. SEC, let's enter appropriate stay. Let me see what it says here. I mean, this is so Gary Gensler-esque. And then this guy says, so they're basically... So basically they're either debating if they're appealing or not, or just completely effing Ripple about. Ripple lawyers are telling the SEC, this is a lot of effing money that we are going to get, uh, going to get back and extract maximum interest from you if you appeal and lose. So are you appealing or not? SEC hasn't been given marching orders yet on the decision. And this is the, easy, the safest way to delay pending October 7th deadline. And then uh, here's Metal Wall Man weighing in on the same thing. I, I got to say, I think it makes it a little bit more likely that there's going to be an appeal. Uh, because if the SEC had already decided that they're not going to appeal, then they would just say, no, go ahead and pay. Pay us. This case is done. So the only two possibilities now are that they are undecided or they have decided to appeal based on what you just read uh, to me. And uh, typically when you have a large judgment like this, um, you, you request a stay um, to pay it. Or, and if that's denied, then sometimes you can use what's called an appeal bond. You don't have to write a check for $125 million. You can get a bond uh, uh, for, you know, it's tiny fraction of that that will pay in the event you lose uh on appeal um so it feels to me like a signal that they're more likely to appeal okay and then jeremy hogan weighs in speculation time most likely <clears throat> jeremy you're not allowed to do that the uh <coughs> the crypto police the xrp gestapo brown shirts you're not allowed to do any form of speculation, even though we're, we're in the most speculative asset class in the history of the world. Someone in their, in their dictatorship um, power structure decided at some point that you're not allowed to talk about speculation, which I've always felt, found hilarious and still do. Speculation time. Most likely the SEC has, just hasn't made a decision whether it will appeal yet. Why? Filing a notice of appeal, see sample below, takes only 15 minutes. You file the notice and then you have 70 days to file the actual brief. If the decision to appeal has, was already made, there's no reason to delay filing the notice, especially when you think it's bad case authority out there. 
All right, so now you're in the loop. Check this out, Ripple X, and that's a wrap. XRPL Zone Korea. So they've been in Korea. There's the whole gang in Korea. And then they're headed to Japan. Uh, XRP community event. Let me see if I can translate this post. XRP event just around the corner, fellow Ripple members. Um, he visited the SBI group office. We had an opportunity to catch up on various matters. If you're attending the event tomorrow, please be there. If you're attending, I think something's lost in translation. But here is first time I've ever seen anybody from Ripple in front of the SBI group logo. Makes you wonder if it's time really does. Now, Mark Cuban has told us that Kamala Harris and friends, they are all for, they are all 100% pro-crypto. Just trust Mark. They told him behind closed doors. They won't say anything publicly, but they told Mark. And in the meantime, Gary Gensler continues to file lawsuits against crypto. And now, Caitlin Long says another bank, another enforcement action. So now, another bank's being gone after now. The CFTC did go after Uniswap Labs, okay? But they, they just settled for $175,000, I think after just a handful of weeks, maybe, of being um, sued by the CFTC. And I said, well, my question is, how about the creation of the Uniswap token? Which sales by the founders are securities? Which sales afterwards are securities? Where's the four-year lawsuit and a $125 million fine? Gary, Hester, where are you at? Crypto industry supporters of Vice President, let me rewrite this. Crypto industry supporters who have no proof that Kamala Harris is going to do anything pro-crypto because she's friends with Elizabeth Warren, they, uh, they're working to set up at least eight fundraisers. So they're going to raise money for her when she won't even publicly tell you what she's going to do that's pro-crypto. Not this guy. And then Putin is laughing himself to sleep every night. Vladimir Putin says Russia supports Kamala Harris over Donald Trump in the presidential election. So the same, these same people who keep saying Russia, 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 Russia and interference. Well, Russia is for them. Wants them to stay in power. Because they're a joke. And then here's Mark Cuban. This is great. I got to give... I got to give some a shout out to Becky Quick, who I have given I've given plenty of hell to Squawk Box on this channel because they deserve it. But in this clip, she lays it out for Mark Cuban, puts him right in his place. There's a, there's a whole bunch of folks in the Valley who I've been in touch with in the past week on this uh, unrealized tax issue, uh, gain issue, and where we've talked about you know those who are taking loans against their their unrealized stock, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then they say, well, you know, if you start to tax that, we won't be able to make investments in startups. We won't be able to give money over to venture capitalists and private equity folks and other things like that. What's the what's your feedback to, to, to that distinction? Because so I exactly wonder what once I there's a critique of one, then, uh, you know, of one policy and you get rid of that policy, then then, of course, it moves to the critique of the next version of it. Well, of course. But OK, so what I told him was if, if you tax unrealized gains, you're going to kill the, the stock market, right? And it's going to be the ultimate employment plan for private equity because companies are not going to go public. So you're telling me that Mark Cuban has to explain to these people, not that these people didn't just uh, float this. They put unre taxing unrealized capital gains for people that are, I think he's, they said over a hundred million dollars. They put that out as a policy. You're telling me that they didn't think that through before they put that out? Bull crap. So they're just going to lie to him and string him along, which is basically what they're about to tell him. As you can get whipsawed, right? I mean, my own personal experience back from the internet days, right? All of a sudden, I was cash poor, but um, equity rich, right? My, my um, net worth was enormous, but the number of dollars in the bank wasn't enormous. And so I'd have, based off of the, the, the unrealized gains, I would have had to borrow money and I effectively would have been in hock just to pay my tax bill instead of trying to run my company and a thousand other reasons, right? So they realize that's the issue. Let me, I can't repeat it enough. Even though she's not directly conflicting the um, Biden tax plan, to her, her value proposition is 
we need to tax everybody fairly. I'm starting from the Biden um, plan as a starting point, but that's not necessarily but her ending Mark, point. let me just say, I, I appreciate you calling in, telling us what you're hearing on these fronts. Let me translate. Hey, you're full of crap, Mark, and I'm going to call you out here, even though I appreciate you calling in. It's great. But as you've said yourself, you can't speak for the vice president. These are things they're telling you. Who knows what they're telling right. other people? My guess is they're telling anybody who's donating to them exactly what they want to hear at this point. What no, matters no, is what no, they no, say no, publicly no, no, and what no, they will no, stick no, to. No, 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 I know because I'm Mark Cuban, an egomaniac, whatever, Mark. You've been had. They own you for some reason. I don't know what he did, what they have on him, but these, these are some evil SOBs. There's no telling what they have on him. Trump to adopt Elon Musk's proposal for Government Efficiency Commission. See, now we're talking some common sense. And then we've got this, the biggest story in politics. I'm doing a call, and, and I need your help. We need to all do it. <clears throat> If we can get John Deaton on, on these major shows like Joe Rogan, Patrick Bet David, Glenn Beck, Tucker Carlson, think about the exposure that he can get that Kamala, not Kamala, that Elizabeth Warren is not even willing to go on with them because she'll be able to actually ask real questions. She can't go on any shows that have more of a following than some of these. She can't go on them. They would have her on, but she won't go on because she's a commie and knows that she'll be asked questions that expose her as such. But John Deaton can, and so let's retweet this and get him on some of these major shows. Welcome back, attorney and Marine Corps veteran John Deaton declaring victory last night in a three-way Massachusetts Republican primary. He's now set to face off against incumbent Democrat Senator Elizabeth Warren this November. Shortly after the race was called, she agreed to participate in two October debates against Deaton, but he's challenging Warren to five single-issue debates on immigration, the economy, income and equality, foreign wars, and women's productive rights. Joining me now is is the man himself, Massachusetts Senate candidate John Dean. Congratulations, John. Thanks very much for being here this morning. No, thank you, Maria, for having me. Um, it's an honor to be on your show. The first person interviewed me after the victory. Well, that's terrific. Thank you for that. I want to get your take on what the plan is now. How do you take on Elizabeth Warren? She's basically in charge of this green climate change agenda. I think she's giving the orders to the administration on, on who to put in uh, cabinet positions and who to nominate uh, for positions. So how do you, how do you win? Listen, there's no doubt that you're right. Her fingerprints are all over uh, the financial markets going on. Uh, and so listen, Elizabeth Warren, uh, what uh, got me in this race is I saw a poll last year, Maria, that Charlie Baker, former Republican governor, would smoke her if he were running in this race. Beats her by 15 points. Let's remember, she finished third. She couldn't even take second when she ran for president in Massachusetts. Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden beat her. She has a 41% approval rating. She's passed one bill in 12 years. And so it's her... I'm not going to play the whole thing. You, you get the gist of it. Nobody likes her. She's been sitting there because nobody legitimate has run against her. John Deaton's going to beat her, and John Deaton's going to end Operation Choke Point 2.0 once and for all because she is Operation Choke Point 2.0. Now, all her, in DAIXRP.com, we're going to talk about a lot of her corrupt friends. Uh, they're already setting the stage for interfering with the election the same way they did in 2020. We're also going to talk about our old friend, Dr. Evil. We're going to be uh, talking about him, too. Saw a clip I wanted to show. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Away we go.